Welcome to part 2 on how to make an upload and download level editor system inside of Unity. If you missed part 1, I will leave a link in the description below, and please make sure you watch it as this is a continuation of the same tutorial. Thank you Loot Locker for sponsoring this video, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you what UI I've got created. First of all, I've gone ahead and made an empty game object called Download Level, inside of which I have a scroll view. On this scroll view, if you open up Viewport and Content, you can see that I have a content size filter that I've set the vertical size to preferred size, and a vertical layout group where I've played around with the padding. This basically will display all the levels that have been uploaded by other players. I've also gone ahead and only kept the scroll bar vertical and removed the horizontal one, but the way you set this up is kind of up to you. I would just recommend you have both of these functions on the content. On here, I also have a refresh button that currently doesn't do anything. I've also gone ahead and made a new button called Download Levels, which we'll be able to press to open up this Download Level menu. The final thing to do in our UI is open up our scroll view, right click our content, press Create New, and we'll call this Level Entry. In my case, I've gone ahead and given it an image for the background, a text component for the name, an image component for the icon, and a button called Load Level which currently doesn't do anything. So what I'm going to do is drag this level entry into prefabs and remove it from inside of here. Let's set our download level to inactive now. Inside of our level entry prefab, I'm going to give a new component called level entry data. And this will basically hold all of the data about the level that this currently represents. So there's a couple of things we want to do here. First of all, add some using methods. The first will be system.io. The second will be using Unity Editor. Third will be using Unity Engine.networking. And finally, using Unity Engine. Dot UI. Let's remove both of these functions and make some variables. The first will be a public integer called ID. The second will be a public string called level name. The third will be a public text called name text. Then we'll make a public image called level icon. And finally, a public string called text file URL. Okay, so there's a couple of things we want to do. We'll start off with the start function in which I will set my transform.position to equal vector3.0. This is because this object will be created as a child of the scroll view that I showed you previously, and we just need to ensure that its position is reset. We'll then also set the local scale to vector3.1. And finally, we want to set the name text dot text to equal level name. And then we want to set our level icon dot sprite to equal level icon dot sprite. The reason we're doing that is because we will be downloading the image, so we need it to refresh. Okay, so we need to make a couple functions. The first one will be public void load level, which for now will be empty. We then want to make a private I enumerator, which is a co-routine called download level text file, which will download our level text file. Instead of here, we want to pass in a string called text file URL. I'm then going to call start coroutine download level text file inside of load level. And for the URL, I will just pass in our text file URL that we made at the top. And then inside of here, we want to download the text file. So for this, we can just do unity web requests, call it www. I make this equal unity web request dot get and then our text file URL. Then I will call yield return www dot send web request, which will basically just send the web request. And now we need to decide where we want to save this file. So let's do string file path. And we want this file path to be exactly the same where we made the text file. In my case, that was an asset screenshots level data. I will then call file dot write all text, then the file path, www.downloadhandler, and then .text. What this basically will do is it'll download the text file and write that data into this text file that we have already saved. Finally, what we want to do is this text file will only be visible to us once we stop playing in the editor, and we don't want that to happen because we want it to refresh straight away. So what we can do is do acid database dot refresh. Finally, we want to wait about half a second, so let's do yield return new wait for seconds. In my case, I'll just wait for one second. And we then want to basically load the level. Now this function doesn't exist just yet, but I will call it nonetheless because we'll make it at some point. So in this case, I'm going to call game object, find game object with tag. In our case, we'll find the level manager and I will grab get component level saver, which we already have the script, and then we'll call a function called load level. I know this function doesn't exist yet and you will get an error just for the time being. Once we load the level, we want to wait two more seconds and then set the download game object to false. So let's do game object dot find game object with tag. In my case, this will be called download menu, and I will just do set active to false. So let me just quickly run through this because it might have been a little bit complicated. What we do is we find the text file from Loot Locker, we then save the text file to our file inside of assets and screenshots. 
we do that by using file.write all text. We then refresh the assets because if we don't do that, it will only have the old data that was previously in it and not the new one that we just wrote. We wait for about a second so that it does fully refresh. We then find the game object level manager where we will call a function called load level that will basically, well, load our new level that we downloaded. And then we wait for about two seconds and then close the menu. The reason we do that is because if we close the menu straight away, what will happen is the level won't fully load and the level can only load as long as this object itself is set active as it holds all the data about our level, which is why I wait about two seconds. So this script is now finished. Let's go into level saver to create this load level function. So in level saver, there's two functions we want to make. The first one will be public void load level and the final one will be public void create assets. If we save this and go into level entry, you should no longer have the error. Okay, so load level will basically load all of our data about the level and create assets will create them. So before we can continue, we actually need to make one more variable. In our case, this will be a public game object array, which will be called possible object. And this will hold all the possible objects that can be created. So let's scroll down and let's make these functions. I'm going to start with the create asset functions as this is fairly easy. For this, we'll make a for loop where int equals zero. As long as i is smaller than asset names dot length, i plus plus. At this point, you could also do asset positions. It doesn't really matter. Then we'll do another for loop where we'll do j. As long as j is smaller than possible objects dot length, j plus plus. So basically we're looping through the length of how many assets we need to create. We'll then loop through the entire possible objects and we'll check if the name of this matches this name, letting us know which asset to create. So we can do possible objects, then j dot name equals asset names i. So we're basically checking if this possible object is the same name as this asset that we are trying to create. We then will just instantiate it. In this case, we'll do possible objects j, then the position, so we'll do asset positions i, and finally the rotation. In my case, I'll just call quaternion.identity. And this function is finished. Now the load level function, which is going to be probably the longest function we need to make. The first thing we need to do is ensure that there are no current savable objects on our screen, so that we basically have an empty scene. For this, I will call for each, where I will reference game object, then I'll call this savable object in game object dot find all game objects, make sure it's plural, with tag, and then the tag, which in my case I called savable. So we're going to loop through all the objects that are savable in our scene, and we will just destroy them. So let's destroy savable object. Awesome. We then basically want to read the text file that we downloaded, and basically fill these arrays with the data from the text file. So first of all, we need to reference the file path, and we already did this multiple times. Once again, make sure it's the same file path throughout the entire project. We then want to read the file, so we'll re reference stream reader, and I'm just going to call this reader, and it'll equal new stream reader and then we'll pass in our file path. Okay, so what do we want to do? The first thing we need to do is determine how many lines are in the text file. And to do this, we'll make a quick reference to num of lines, which I'll set to zero. And to find out how many lines are in a text file, we can just do a while loop. And while our reader can still read lines and doesn't equal null, we'll just do num of lines plus plus. And the reason we need the number of lines is because we need to make these arrays the same length as how many lines there are in the text file. So what we can do, asset names will equal new string and we'll pass in zero. And the reason for this is because we need to clear these arrays and then fill them back up. And we'll do the same for asset positions, which will equal new vector three, zero. And finally, we wanna fill them. So let's copy both of these. And for the number, we'll just pass in num of line. Once we do that, we will just close our reader because our reader has reached the end of the lines, meaning we can't do anything more with it. However, we still need to read the positions and the names. So we need to open up the reader once again so let's do stream reader. In this case, we need to call it something new. So I'm just going to call it reader2, which will equal new stream reader and then the file path. And finally, we want to read it. So to do this, we'll do while reader two dot end of stream. Basically, this means what while it hasn't reached the end of the file, we'll do a for loop where int i equals zero. As long as i is smaller than num of lines, because we've already figured that out at the top, we'll do i plus plus. So we'll basically read through the entire script. And finally, we want to save the data. Now, if you remember, we saved the data with commas. So we want to basically separate it now where the commas are. So for this, I'm going to call make a new array called string data, which will equal reader to dot read line. And we want to split it where the commas are like so. And just make sure these are singular quotation marks. And now we want to fill the data. So we can just do asset names i equals data zero because it will be the first thing we read. Then asset positions dot i dot x will be data and it'll be the first coordinate. And then we'll copy and paste this two more times. We'll do y 
and z and we'll pass in two and three. Now you notice we're getting an error and this is because this is currently a string and we need it to be a float. So we can just do float.pass and wrap this in some parentheses. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this onto both of these and make sure to have the parentheses at the end. Okay, now outside of the while loop, I am going to close our reader too so we don't have any memory leaks. And finally, I will call create assets. And that is our entire function for the load level. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but hopefully that made sense. We basically just clear the arrays, we read how many lines there are, we reset the arrays and create them from scratch again. We then close the file and we read it again where we read all of the data like the names and positions. Okay, so with all of that finished, let's go into our level manager as this will be the final part where we need to make some functions. Instead of here, we make two new functions. The first one will be a public void download level data and the final one will be an i enumerator called load level icon in which i will pass in a string called image url and an image called level image so i will start with the download level data now the data we're downloading is directly from loot locker and we can just call loot locker sdk manager dot get assets asset list with count and then we want to pass in how many levels we want to download now you can make this like a hundred or whatever i'm going to only download 10 levels at once this this system also allows us to maybe set up pages for the levels so we can go to page one two three or four but in my case i'll just grab the first 10 levels I will then call response equals or larger than and some brackets, finish off with a parenthesis and a colon, in which I will make a for loop where int i equals zero, while i is smaller than response dot assets dot length i plus plus. And then we want to set up those data level entry items that we created earlier in the editor. Now, they currently don't exist in this project, so let's make some references to them. And there is two references we need to make. First of all, the game object itself. So let's reference game object and call this level entry display item and finally where we want to create them and if you remember we have that context in our scroll view and that's where we want to make it so let's do transform make it public and call this level data entry content okay if we now scroll down to this right here we will make a new game object called display item which will equal instantiate then the level entry display item then we want to get a transform.position and finally quaternion.identity. And then we want to set this item to be a child of that context. So what we can do is just do display item dot transform dot set parent. And then inside of this, we'll just reference level data entry content. And finally, if you remember, our level data entry content has a couple variables. We just want to set them. So to do this, we'll just reference display item dot get component, then level entry data, and we'll set the ID to equal I. I'm then going to just copy and paste this, but instead I will just call level name, which will equal response dot assets, and then I dot name. And finally, we want to set the text URL. To do this, we will reference loot locker file, and we'll make this an array because we're actually grabbing 10 images, and we'll call this level image files, which will equal response dot assets, and then in my case, we'll type in i.files. Then what we want to do is start this coroutine. So we'll do start coroutine load level icon, where we want to pass in the image URL, which in our case, we'll just level image files. And we'll do zero because we want to grab the screenshot. And then we'll pass in zero because the screenshot has the ID of zero and the text file has the ID of one. But we want to just grab the image. We'll then do dot URL. And then finally to string. Then we'll pass in our image. So for this, we can just do display item dot get component, then level entry data and do level. And that is that function finished. And finally, we just need to set the URL. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and instead write text file URL. And this will equal level image files. And this time one, because we're trying to grab the text file URL and not the image URL, URL dot to string. And as a final thing, inside of here, where we made the parentheses, we want to type null and true. The reason we're writing true is because we only want to grab the UGC assets. We don't want to grab all the other assets like the player items and stuff. We just want the levels. So I know this might have been a little bit confusing but let me quickly explain. We basically instantiate the level entry. We set the transform to the parent. We set its ID and level name. We then make an array that will hold all of our screenshots. We then we'll call the start coroutine that will download that screenshot. And finally, we set the text file URL to once again those files, but this time of ID one, because the screenshot has ID zero and the text file has ID one. So the final thing we need to do is actually download the screenshots. And this is basically the same way that we downloaded the text file. Make sure you go to the top and you are using unityengine.networking. And then at the bottom here, we will reference unity web request, www, or equal unity web request texture this time 
dot get texture and then we'll pass in the image url we'll then do a yield return www dot send web request and then we'll make a new texture 2d which will be called loaded image which will equal download handler texture dot get content and then www finally we want to set the sprite for the level image so let's do level image dot sprite equals sprite dot create where we'll pass in our loaded image because that's the texture we'll then make a new rect in which I'm going to set 0, 0, and then the loaded image dot width and loaded image dot height. And as a final thing, we want to do a comma and set vector 2 dot 0. So that is our entire curry finished. Inside of Unity, on our level entry, we're going to drag in a couple things. First of all, the text file, so the item name and also the icon. We'll then go on the button and, and give this a function. Well, I'll drag in level entry. Let's exit this and save it. Instead of here, I'm going to reference my download levels button on which I'm going to add a new function where I will drag in download level and I'll just set it to active true. Then on our download level menu, on our refresh button, we want to add a new function where we'll drag in our level manager. We'll reference level manager and download level data. Then on our level manager, we need to drag in the content. So let's open up our scroll view, viewport and content and just drag that in. We can then set this to inactive. And finally, on our level manager, we just need to drag in the level entry for the display item. And as a final thing, we need to open up our level saver and in possible objects, we need to add all the objects that can be created. In my case, this will be the crate, the sort item and the trampoline. And finally, you may remember in the level entry data, we reference two tags. First of all, the level manager and the download menu. So what you want to do is inside of Unity, make sure the level manager has a new tag called level manager and just give it that tag. And the download menu also has a new tag called download menu. So let's save this and test it out. Before we test, we are actually going to remove the screenshots and this level data, just in case anything happens since this tutorial was separated into two parts. I'm then going to start in the main menu, press play. I'm going to start by logging in. I will create a really basic level of free clay crates like this. I will upload it and I will just call this Zyger level two. Let's upload it. It's going to wait a little bit. And then inside of lead locker, if I refresh, we should now have a second level. Awesome. And if we press download levels, we should be able to press refresh, which will load both of the levels. We have Zyger level one and Zyger level two, and both screenshots are working. Let's go ahead and now download Zyger level one. Let's press load level. It's going to wait a little bit and it's loaded. Awesome. Let's try it again and download level two this time. And there we go. That's also has been loaded. So that is it for this tutorial. If you want to get access to the source code, and I mean the entire project, then I'll leave my Patreon link down below. Down there, you will also be able to get access to all of my other tutorial source codes. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, then go ahead and join my Discord, link down below. And make sure to check out Loot Locker with the links down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.